This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, August 31st. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, Ministry of Labor to tackle the concern of worker productivity during Labor Month. Major players in agriculture discuss benefits of agriculture crop insurance for Grenada and 100 jobs to be made available for young people in the tourism industry. Details to these and other stories are next. employer and you're not sure how to deal with the issue of sick days, maternity leave, overtime or holiday pay? Are you an employee and think you're not being treated fairly? Do you know your rights according to the labor code? Workers know your rights. Employers know your rights. Labor officers are coming your way. On Thursday, September 9th, labor officers will be in Karyaku at the Welcome Center from 9 a.m. Then on Saturday, September 11th, labor officers will be in Guov at the same time. John's Anglican School and Sateas at the St. Patrick's Anglican School from 9 a.m. Call the Ministry of Labor at 440-2532. Workers, know your rights. Employers, know your rights. viewers. The Ministry of Labor is concerned about the level of worker productivity in the country and will seek to educate employers and employees about its importance during Labor Month. Acting Permanent Secretary Isaac Bagwin says productivity is necessary for continued economic development. Labor Month, which will be observed from September 1 to 30, will also serve to highlight the necessity for industrial peace and stability. It is all of us responsibility to, to be as productive as we can. In fact, we want to appeal to the public, to all workers, to reflect at the end of the day and, and to ask yourself the question whether you have done an honest day's work for an honest day pay. Because um, we, we are concerned about the level of, of productivity in this country. And again, we want to emphasize that um, workers have a responsibility towards the employer and similarly employers to the, employers to the employees. As you all are aware, we are governed by, by um, a labor code, and um, from time to time the, the private sector complain about the level of productivity of the employees. Um, equally, the government of Greenland have concerns with the, the public officers in terms of the level of productivity. As you, as you are well aware, we have a public sector reform initiative that is ongoing, and um, we are trying to ensure that um, PSCs, heads of departments, managers and so, take that responsibility serious and make sure that um, the, the workers under their, under their care uh, produce, and uh, as I've indicated, give a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Uh, too often we have um, officers going out to the field, you're not sure what they're doing, there's no reports, etc. And so we want to make sure that um, uh, people are held accountable for, for the, the work that they undertake to do. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Labor, Mr. Isaac Bagwin. Labor Commissioner Cyrus Griffith says they want to shift people's thinking away from their belief that the Ministry of Labor is simply an industrial firefighter. He says they are changing their approach and, and operating more in accordance with the decent work agenda. With regards to the Labor Code, he says there are areas that need to be amended and they want people to give their views during the Labor Fairs. One will be held in Karakou and on September. September 9 and two in St. Patrick and St. John on September 11. We have an Employment Act which will comprise a labor code. It will comprise two pieces of legislation, the Employment Act and the Labor Relations Act. And this provides the minimum standards for settling disputes. And as part five in it states that better terms are not precluded. So by that it means that Either is a trade union in the workplace, obviously, the union will obviously negotiate for better terms, better than what this says. But and certain employers can also negotiate with a worker for better terms, as stated in this. 
but they set the minimum standards. Hence the reason why we have this labor month, so we can discuss with employers who need be and discuss all workers so that they can be au fait to what is existing and what we intend to do over the labor code. This has been here from since 1999, this was passed, but obviously in law is dynamic and there are areas in it that needs to be attended to and, and amended, but as you see, we, we encourage people to give us their views, etc. And when we have the labor fair, the three days, Karaku, St. John's, and St. Patrick's, we hope to get a number of people coming there to ask questions, and we will do our best to answer all the questions, and we they see need for amendments. But right now we're looking at areas in the court to amend. And it's, we're taking a tripartite approach, employers, government, and trade unions. So we'll amend as we see it fit, and we encourage questions as we see it fit. And obviously we wouldn't get everything amended overnight. But at the same time, all concerns will be with that, that are raised will be noted, and we'll take it in stride. Acting Labour Minister Senator George Prime says partnership is important in these difficult times since government cannot solve all the country's problems on its own. The partnerships that we are seeking and these activities no doubt will reinforce and give, give, give credence to our commitment to work in unison and in partnership with other stakeholders, in particular the Labour Union, the Employers Federation, uh, government itself, so that these tripartite arrangements are really important for us in seeking to have a platform for the development of our country, in particular as we go into these difficult times. Some of the major players in the agriculture industry spent part of Tuesday examining an agriculture strategic plan for the nutmeg industry and a pre-feasibility study on agriculture crop insurance. The acting permanent secretary in the ministry, Aaron Francois, says the intention is to modernize the agriculture sector and inspire confidence among farmers. Um, the issue of agricultural insurance is one that seeks to reduce risk. And what that does for the agricultural sector is to um, enable uh, uh, investors, donor agencies. So for example, the banks would have greater confidence in investing in the sector, in advancing loans and so on to farmers, knowing that they have insurance cover and the risk would be much lower in that sense. Ms. Florita Kentish, the FAO representative to the OECS and Barbados, says it is important that Grenada has a vibrant nutmeg industry. She says they hope what comes out of Tuesday's meeting will strengthen what goes before the co-ted ministers in the area of disaster risk management. You know that, for instance, uh, nutmeg has a major, within um, the Grenada con uh, context, um, product, which is a health product, your nutmeg. Uh, which is used uh, for arthritis and for other means. Uh, if we don't have sufficient product um, to get the oils to, to, to develop this, it is going to have a spin-off um, in other parts of our, our society. And that is just one example. Um, so really and truly what we have here happening um, today is that all of the various stakeholders know that the assessment has been done, putting their heads together to validate the work to see what areas of it really suits the Grenadian context and perhaps can be used even wider afield. It is the sort of model that we, we hope uh, would speak to developing um, such um, schemes, insurance schemes, for other commodities, other crops as well. We are trusting that what comes out of here would further strengthen what goes forward to the, um, the quoted uh, ministers on the in area of disaster risk management. The CARICOM through the quoted ministers uh, and also the heads of governments have indicated that uh, disaster risk management is key for the region as a whole and therefore something must be done to mitigate the problems. The meeting was attended by representatives from insurance companies, agricultural banks, marketing corporations, IICA, Cardi, FAHO and farmers among others. 
100 jobs will soon be available to young people in the tourism industry. This will be made possible with the implementation of the Ministry of Tourism's Spice Usher's Image Task Force, How May I Help You Brigade. The idea was brought before Cabinet and was approved and will soon be implemented. Details in this report. The Spice Usher's Image Task Force, How May I Help You Brigade, is the newest initiative of the Ministry of Tourism in an effort to address some of the reported issues within the industry. According to these reports, both visitors and locals have expressed disgust with the way persons will treat them when visiting sites around the island. They will be hustled for money or may not be able to receive adequate assistance for directions. It's for this reason the ministry came up with a task force that will be deployed on the various sites to provide the said services. Applications are now open to the public and Minister for Tourism Glennis Roberts says they will not be selected on academia but love for country and a good attitude. She was addressing members of the media at a post-cabinet briefing on Tuesday at the ministerial complex. We will have them um, scattered all over on the beach in uniform so that they'll be easily identified and it's a form of you know, getting our young people and those who are hidden in the back with beautiful personalities that can come, they'll be trained um, intensively for two weeks. Um, we want to improve that customer relationship that we have and see how best we can maintain the image of friendliness of our Grenadian people. Training of the applicants will commence on September 15, running until the 29th. In the first instance, participants will have contracts for the period November 2010 to April 2011 and will officially begin work on October 4th. It's not only for St. George's because we have sites scattered all over, right? So it's for to be able to be on site and we're asking young ladies, young men, <laughs> nice personality, you know, come. Don't feel because you do not have a lot of O levels that you can't make it. We will train you, you know, into being the best spice usher that you can be. Minister for Tourism, Honorable Glennis Roberts. In other news, Grenadians may soon find it a bit easier to further their studies at the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Government is facilitating construction of a campus on island. Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Senator Frank Alexis Bernadine, says government could sign over property for the construction of the university by this year end. By the end of this year, 2010, to hand over the land to University of the West Indies to build the new open campus of the University of the West Indies, which will offer face-to-face -face as well as online courses in a variety of options. We also have another Grenadian institution, the Grenada University of Science and Technology, that plans to offer tertiary level opportunities for undergraduate programs in Grenada. All of this coupled with online courses through other universities would allow us to open up the pathways for tertiary education for our people. The Ministry of Education, the Government of Grenada, is committed to greater opportunities in education. That is our fourth goal for this five-year period for Grenadians, young and old. The Education Minister also pointed out that government is well on its way to passing the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Bill to ensure that whatever educational opportunities are made available to Grenadians will be of a certain standard. We are also well on the way to passing the Quality Assurance and Accreditation Bill, which we hope to process through Parliament by the end of September 2010. This speaks to ensuring that all programs offered to our people and others are accredited. AUE currently operates a distance learning facility at Marishow House. With the start of the 2010-2011 cruise ship season just around the corner, the Grenada Board of Tourism is working to ensure that the people who will directly interact with visitors are up to the task. The board met with licensed spice and craft vendors to discuss 